पाथ इन नाइन लंडन इन 1971 ये हियर लेटर ही रिसीव्ड सेकेंड इनिशिएशन ही हैज बीन प्रैक्टिसिंग फॉर ओवर लास्ट 25 फाइव ईयर्स इन एशियन कंट्रीज सच एज इंडिया फिलिपाइंस चाइना ताइवान सिंगापुर हांगकॉन्ग मलेशिया एंड थाईलैंड एंड थ्रू इस ईयर्स ऑफ प्रीचिंग he has given countless so practical guidance and deep inspiration taking sanyasa in mayapur in 1994 from tamal krishna goswami maharaj he did not mean much of a change in his lifestyle since maharaj has always been strict in his sadhana whoever gets to know maharaja admires and respects is a sincere and faithful practice of chanting the holy names of the lord he truly walks his talk maharaja has been teaching with the, the mayapur institute since its inception so with this very brief um, introduction i would like to welcome maharaj uh, his holiness bhakti vigna vinash swami maharaj hari hari krishna maha mantra hari krishna hari krishna 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 hari 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 rama hari rama 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 hari hari हरे कृष्णा माता जी हरे कृष्णा महाराज इज जॉइनिंग इन वन मिनट जस्ट यस मैम सो विल चैंट हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 रामा हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा महाराज प्लीज एक्सेप्ट अवर अम्बल ओबेसेंसेस हरे कृष्णा प्लीज एक्सेप्ट माय हम्बल ओबेसेंसेस गो हेड माता जी Yes, uh, yes, Prabhu. I have done introduction, Prabhu. Yeah, sure, sure. Go ahead, Madhu. Uh, Prabhu, it's done again. Shall I say a few words? Yeah, sure, Madhu. Go ahead. Okay, Prabhu. Hare yes. Krishna is a. Uh, our uh, uh, we are really very fortunate to have uh, his holiness uh, bhakti vigna vinash uh, narsim swami maharaj with us today and uh, just like to tell very few lines uh, i don't want to take more time uh, so i'll uh, tell few words about uh, maharaj um, bhakti vigna vinash narsim swami maharaj was initiated by shila prabhupad in N london in 1971 a year later he received a second initiation he has been preaching over last 25 years in asian countries such as uh, india philippines china taiwan singapore hong kong malaysia and thailand his years of preaching he has given countless souls practical guidance and deep inspiration taking sanyasa in mayapur in 1994 from tamal krishna goswami uh, maharaj did not mean much of a change in his lifestyle 
since Maharaja has always been strict in his sadhana. Whoever gets to know Maharaja admires and respects his sincere and faithful practice of chanting the holy names of the Lord. He truly walks his talk. Maharaja has been teaching with the Mayapur Institute since its inception. And we, wel we all welcome Holiness Maharaja with Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Oh, what happened? Prabhu, can you help me here? What's what's going on? Yeah, uh, Radha Madhav Mataji, which uh, one eight, which Loka Mataji? Thirty-six. Yeah. Okay. It is one. Uh, Eight yeah, eight. Hard, hard. is that the best? 36? Yeah, 1, 18, 36. Okay. I also get 40. Okay. Yes. So I can begin, Maharaj, is it? Yes, Maharaj. Do you tend the verse or what? I just read it? Yeah, anything okay, Maharaj. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So we're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 18, which is entitled Maharaj Parikshit Kursht. And this is text number 36. Itiyukva rasa taroraksha vayasyam rishibalaka koshiki Koshikya Appa Upashrishya Vag Brajram Vish Visharajyaha. Translation The son of the Rishi, his eyes red hot with anger, touched the water of the river Koshik while speaking to his playmates and discharged. The following thunderbolt of words, purport by Srila Prabhupada. The circumstances under which Maharaj Parikshit was cursed were simply childish, as it appears from this verse. Sringi was showing his impudency amongst his playmates, who were innocent. Any sane man would have prevented him from doing such great harm to all human society. By killing a king like Maharaj Parikshit, just to make a show of acquired Brahminical power, the inexperienced son of a Brahmana committed a great mistake. Om Magyana Tamarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakopata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bayevacha Patitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnavi Bio Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasari Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare I'll just read that verse again, the translation. The son of the Rishi, 
His eyes, red hot with anger, touched the water of the river Koshik while speaking to his playmates and discharged the following thunderbolt of words. So we're hearing how the son of the Rishi, his name was Shringi, and he was the son of Shamika Rishi. Shamika Rishi was living in the forest. He had an ashram in the forest. And it happened, Maharaj Parikshit had come into the ashram of the Rishi looking for water. Maharaj Parikshit was on some kind of hunting expedition in the forest. And he was overwhelmed by thirst. So he entered the ashram of Shamika Rishi. And Shamika Rishi at that time was engaged in meditation. So Maharaj Parikshit didn't receive any hospitality from the Rishi. And the Rishi was deep in trance. And there was no greeting or anything. So Maharaj Parikshit was disturbed that he had not been received and he took a dead snake and he put it around the neck of Shamika Rishi. And Sringi, who was the son, of, the son of the Rishi, he had witnessed the act and he was some distance away in the company of his friends and he saw Maharaj Parikshit doing this to his father. So Shringi became very angry, as described here, that he was, his eyes red hot with anger. So try to understand just how degrading a thing anger is. This is one point from this verse, the, 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 the danger of anger which is not properly controlled. Now, anger, of course, can also be used in the service of Lord Krishna. We see during the battle of Kurukshetra, Arjuna used his anger in the battle of Kurukshetra to fight against the Kauravas. Then it was Arjuna who helped to win the battle of Kurukshetra. Although Bhima killed all the sons of Duryodhan, Arjuna also helped a lot. So Arjuna used his anger in the service of Krishna and similarly Hanuman, he used his anger in the service of Lord Ramachandra at the battle of Lanka. That's two devotees who could use anger in the service of the Lord. However, Sringi, who is the son of a great sage, so he's also son of a Brahmana, he, his anger is not being properly directed. He is not qualified to use anger. Without being the master of the mind and senses, then we have no right to use anger because anger will simply degrade us. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes that there are three gates into hell, lust, anger, and greed. Lord Krishna says every sane person will want to avoid these three things, lust, anger, and greed. Sometimes it will say lust, uh, anger, and passion. So it's the same, same thing. Also, in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes how we degrade ourselves. When we're not able to control our mind and senses, we fall into darkest ignorance. Lord Krishna describes, he says, we begin by contemplating different objects for our material enjoyment. 
we look at something and we contemplate that, oh, I would like this, I'd like to enjoy that. And then we become attached to something. We become attached to the object, which we think will satisfy our senses. And then from that attachment, then lust develops. Lust, the desire to enjoy something. So we get something, we try to enjoy it, and we are often disappointed. And what does not satisfy our senses in the manner which we thought it would, then we become angry. And that anger leads to uh, illusion. And from illusion, then we forget our actual spiritual identity and we fall into the darkest ignorance. So anger is described in this Bhagavad Gita there, second chapter. It says, Dayato vishayam pumsa sangas teshu pajayate. Sangat sanjayate kama, kama krodo vijayate. Lord Krishna is explaining that anger comes after lust. And the initial cause is this lust, the desire to enjoy something, the, the desire to satisfy our senses. And that's how anger comes up. And that anger can degrade us so easily. We have to therefore be very careful to check our anger, not to become overwhelmed by a situation. We see sometimes when people get angry, do terrible things. They will not only yell and scream and shout, sometimes they will throw things, they will slam the door sometimes, they'll make a big scene because they're so angry. And that anger all came because of their frustration, because of their disappointment in trying to satisfy themselves materially. So it happens like this here in Srimad Bhagavatam. This uh, son of Samikarishi, whose name was Sringi, he had some Brahminical power. Being the son of a Brahmana, he had also some of the powers of his father, but he didn't know how to control them and he didn't know how to use them properly. And that is why he put this curse, or he's going to put, we're going to hear in a verse or two, we will hear how he puts a curse on Maharaj Parikshit. Now, Maharaj Parikshit had done wrong. He'd made a mistake. There's no doubt about that. We know he'd made some mistake by putting a dead snake around Samikarishi. It was not proper. Somehow, it was the arrangement of destiny that he did this. His offense was there, although the offense did not, did not it was not worthy of a death penalty. He didn't do really any harm to Samikarishi. He just put the dead snake around him. When San, Samikarishi himself, when he came out of his trance, he didn't even worry about the fact that a dead snake was around him. He just knocked it off. He just threw it to the ground. It didn't affect him. It didn't bother him at all. But the son, his son, the Shringi, he was proud. He was influenced by this pride of being the son of a Brahmana and considering himself to be also a Brahmana. And he did not want to give any kind of respect to Maharaj Parikshit. Now Maharaj Parikshit, as well as being the ruler and the king of that part of the world, he was also a very great devotee. 
he was the grandson of Arjuna. And the citizens in general all loved Maharaj Parikshit. He was a respected leader. And he lived a good, a God conscious life. He kept the age of Kali under control. So long as Maharaj Parikshit was ruling the kingdom, the personality of Kali could not enter because he was such a powerful king. He would not allow anything in his kingdom where there was to, going to be gambling or meat eating or intoxication or illicit connection with the other sex. He, rest, he restricted the activities of the personality of Kali. So he was really a God-conscious king. But the Sringi, he is a degraded son of a Brahmana. And he has some Brahminical power. And we often see when someone gets a little power, it goes to their head. And they become intoxicated by it. Intoxication means pride. They become proud of their position. Just like this young boy, he, he was only uh, some 16 years of age, but he had some Brahminical power due to the position of his father. But he abused that power. He didn't use it properly. Instead of using his power for the good of the world, he used it to do harm because he cursed Maharaj Parikshit. Now the curse was that he would die in seven days. So that was a death penalty, that he cursed him to die. And that meant it was going to happen because this boy, although he was only six, 16, because he was a, born in the Brahminical family, he had that kind of power. And simply by his willing, this Maharaj Parikshit would die in seven days. So Sringi didn't know how to use his Brahminical qualities. It's important for us to appreciate the nature of the age of Kali. Actually, it said from the cursing of Maharaj Parikshit, that gave Kali a chance to enter into the world. And so the Kali Yuga began. The Kali Yuga is symptomized by sinful activities, eating all different kinds of food, all different kinds of living entities, meat and fish and eggs, these things, and taking intoxication and gambling and associating illicitly with the other sex. These are all the signs of the age of Kali. When Maharaj Parikshit was the king, there was none of these activities. And we've also heard in the first canto there in Srimad Bhagavatam, we heard when Maharaj Parikshit was touring the kingdom, he came across a person dressed like a king with a sword in his hand and the bull was standing on only a portion of one leg and the cow was standing with tears in her eyes. So when Maharaj Parikshit saw this scene, he was ready to kill this person. He was ready to kill the personality of Kali. However, personality of Kali surrendered to Maharaj Parikshit and Maharaj Parikshit gave some concessions that he could reside wherever there is no Wherever there is hoarding of gold, he could live there. Because wherever there is hoarding of gold, then the sinful activities will come. The more there is opulence, 
then the more there's a tendency towards sinful life. The more one has wealth and power, they don't know how to use it properly and they engage in the sinful activities of the age of Kali. So this is what happened. Maharaj Parikshit was cursed that he is supposed to die in seven days. And that curse is actually a blessing. Now, that's one of the interesting features that we see sometimes when a devotee is cursed, although the curse is put on the devotee to do, to do harm and to give trouble to the devotee, the devotee can accept the curse as a blessing of Lord Krishna. And we see examples. We will see here, for example, Maharaj Parikshit, that although he was cursed to die, it was an opportunity for him to meet Sukadeva Goswami and to hear the Srimad Bhagavatam. So that was a blessing. He met Sukadeva Goswami, and in this way, he was able to attain perfection by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam for seven days and seven nights. At the end of it, Maharaj Parikshit was a fully liberated soul. There are other examples of devotees being cursed. Being cursed. For example, our Damodar Lila, we tell how Lord Krishna pulled the mortar between two Arjuna trees and he brought, when he knocked over the two Arjuna trees, the two sons of Vera, Nala Kuvera and Mani Griva appeared from the trees. So these two boys, the sons of Kuvera, they had been cursed by Narada Muni. But that cursing was a blessing for them because it was an opportunity for them to, see, to meet with Lord Krishna and to see Lord Krishna's childhood Leela. And in this way, they became great devotees. So this was the blessing of the curse of Narada Muni. Another devotee who was cursed was Chitraketu. Chitraketu happened to go into the region where Lord Shiva was residing with his wife Parvati. So when Chitraketu came in there, he saw that Lord Shiva was sitting with his wife Parvati embracing him. And Parvati was sitting, seated on the lap of her husband. And at the same time, she was embracing Lord Shiva. But the surprising thing was that Lord Shiva and Mother Parvati were sitting in front of an assembly of great sages and yogis. So when Chitraketu saw this, he laughed. He thought it was amusing. However, Lord Shiva's wife, Parvati, she didn't think it was amusing. And she took his laughter to be offensive. Actually, Maharaj, Ch Maharaj Chitraketu was not being offensive, but this, he just thought it was unusual. And he had respect for Lord Shiva. He was a devotee. But he just thought it was unusual that they should be sitting together so intimately in the presence of an assembly of other great young men. So she cursed Chitraketu. She cursed him to become a demon. And when Chitraketu got cursed, he didn't mind. He took the opportunity to fall at the feet of Mother Parvati and thank her. He said, thank you, Mother. He didn't mind. It wasn't a problem for him. He saw everything as the arrangement of the Supreme Lord. So here also, Maharaj Parikshit being cursed, you can say it's also the arrangement of the Supreme Lord. Because as a result of that cursing, 
the Srimad Bhagavatam was spoken. And the Srimad Bhagavatam is the literary incarnation of Lord Krishna. In the Kali Yuga, Lord Krishna comes in the form of the Srimad Bhagavatam. So that's very important. Okay, are there any questions on this verse? Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, thank you so much uh, for your enlightening uh, session here. I have been asked to give a small uh, summary about for the class in Hindi. Is it okay, Maharaj? Uh, can I give that? Oh yeah, please. Yeah, you want to do verse? You want to do sentence by sentence in future? Uh, no, uh, I have been asked to give just a summary of the whole class that you give, uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. In very short, I'm going to tell that. Okay, go ahead. Hare Krishna. So, Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishta Bhutale Shimad Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunivati Pasha Tateshatayane Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advita Gadadhara Shiva Sadi God Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna So, Hare Krishna, we have heard Aaj Hamne His Holiness Vigna Vinash नरसिंह महाराज से आज का ये सत्र सुना अष्टाद भागवतम पर तो यहाँ महाराज ने जो है जो गुस्से के ऊपर उन्होंने शुरू में बताया कि किस तरह भगवान के जो भक्त होते हैं वो अपना गुस्सा भगवान की सेवा में लगाते हैं तो उन्होंने तब उदाहरण दिया था अर्जुन का अर्जुन ने अपना जो गुस्सा है कृष्णा के सेवा में लगाया था और हनुमान ने जो है अपना गुस्सा श्री राम के सेवा में लगाया था और यहाँ पर बताया गया है श्रृंगी जो एक काफी उच्चतर जो है शिक्षित ब्राह्मण के पुत्र थे तो उन उन्होंने अपना जो गुस्सा वो ऐसे भगवान की सेवा में लगाकर उन्होंने एक महान भक्त भगवान के जो है परीक्षित महाराज के ऊपर उन्होंने अभिशाप दे दिया था और उनके जो पिता थे जो जो ध्यान मग्न थे जब परीक्षित महाराज आए थे तो तो उनका उन्होंने परीक्षित महाराज को ठीक से आह्वान नहीं किया था तो इसके कारण श्रींगी तो उनको खुद को कुछ खास ऐसा नहीं लगा था क्योंकि वो बहुत ब्राह्मणिकल शक्ति थी पर उन्होंने सही से उपयोग नहीं किया था फिर महाराज ने बोला कि भगवत गीता में बताया जाता है कि तीन कारण से जो बहुत मुख्य जो है वो हमें नरक की तरफ ले जाते हैं काम क्रोध और लोभ और इसीलिए जो जिनके जिनके अंदर वो शांत स्वभाव के जो लोग होते हैं जो अनुभव होते हैं अनुभवी होते हैं वो कभी भी इन तीन ती चीजों को नहीं लाते हैं अपने जीवन में वो अवॉइड करते हैं और ये जो है ये जो गुस्सा जो है हमें ये पतन की ओर हमें ले जाते हैं तो कई बारी हमारे अंदर भौतिक कामनाएं आ जाती है कामना के कारण हम लोग भौतिक वस्तु की तरफ हम आकर्षित हो जाते हैं और जब वो वस्तु हमें ना प्राप्त हो तो उससे हमें बहुत गुस्सा आता है और गुस्सा से भ्रमित हो जाते हैं और भ्रमित के कारण हम फिर से इस भौतिक जगत के इस अंधकार में हम जाकर गिर जाते हैं तो इसमें महाराज ने धाया तो विशान पुमसान का जो है श्लोक उन्होंने हमें बताया था और फिर यहाँ पर बताया गया कि महाराज परीक्षित को किस तरह से जो इस शमी का ऋषि ने जो का उसका पुत्र श्रृंगी ने किस तरह गलत तरह के से अपना गुस्से का इस्तेमाल किया और एक सर्प को जो है जब उन्होंने देखा कि उनके पिता के गले में एक मारा हुआ सर्प था तो इससे उन्होंने महाराज परीक्षित को अभिशाप दे दिया कि सात दिन में और उनका जो है देहांत हो जाएगा और ये ये जो बच्चा था ये जो श्रमिका के जो बेटा था श्रृंगी इसका सिर्फ उम्र था सोलह साल पर उनके अंदर बहुत शक्ति था कुछ ब्राह्मणों के अंदर जो शक्ति होती है वो उसके अंदर था तो उन्होंने गलत तरह से इस्तेमाल किया और महाराज बता रहे थे कि ये कलयुग का जो आविर्भाव जो कलयुग पूरी तरह से अपने शक्ति में आ गया इस जो वाक्य के बाद जब महाराज परीक्षित को अभिशाप दिया गया उसके बाद ही कली का और ज्यादा प्रकोप बढ़ गया और इसके जो लक्षण थे जिस तरह से 
मांसाहार करना अवैध स्त्री संघ करना जुआ सट्टा खेलना और मदिरा पान करना अलग अलग नशा करना ये पूरी तरह से आ गया था इसका प्रकोप बढ़ गया था पर महाराज परीक्षित का जब शासन था तब ये सब कुछ भी नहीं आया था और यहाँ पर ये भी बताया गया है कि कई बारी जो है जब भक्तों को अभिशाप दिया जाता है तो वो एक आशीर्वाद की तरह वो आ जाता है तो यहाँ पर जिस तरह से बताया गया महाराज परीक्षित ने भी इस जो अभिशाप को उन्होंने स्वीकार कर लिया था बहुत बड़े भक्त थे और जिसके कारण आज श्रीमद भागवतम हमारे सामने आए क्योंकि महाराज परीक्षित इस अभिशाप के बाद ही उन्होंने सुखदेव गोस्वामी के साथ उनकी मुलाकात हुई और श्रीमद भागवतम उन्होंने सुना और जिसके वजह से आज हम श्रीमद भागवतम इतने सुंदर से पढ़ रहे हैं इस तरह से महाराज ने दामोदर के संदर्भ में भी बताया कि इस तरह से नल कुबेर और मणिक्रीव को भी नारद मुनि से अभिशाप मिला था पर वो अभिशाप के कारण वो एक जो है आशीर्वाद की तरह उनके लिए साबित हुआ क्योंकि वो भगवान श्री कृष्ण का साक्षात दर्शन कर पाए थे फिर महाराज ने चित्रकेतु के संबंध में भी बताया था कि जब वो शिव लोक में गए थे वहां पर जब पार्वती को देखा था शिव जी के पास भक्त सन्निग में बैठकर तो उन्होंने हंसा था पर वो भक्त थे और उन्होंने वो स्वीकार कर लिया था और उनका जो अभिशाप था जो चित्र कितु को दिया गया था पार्वती ने बोला था कि आप एक राक्षस बनोगे तो इसी तरह हम देखते हैं कि जब भक्तों के ऊपर अभिशाप दिया जाता है तो वो एक जो है आशीर्वाद की तरह फल देता है और इसी में यही जो सार है आज के श्लोक से हम समझते हैं कि महाराज परीक्षित को जब अभिशाप दिया श्रृंगी ने उन्होंने स्वीकार किया और यही वजह से श्रीमद भागवतम उनको सात दिन और सात रात तक उनको सुनने का अवसर मिला और वो अपना जीवन सार्थक कर दिए हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे थैंक यू ओके थैंक यू यस सो इज एनी सम सम क्वेश्चन और कमेंट एनीथिंग टू डिस्कस हरे कृष्णा महाराज धन्यवाद प्रणाम इट वॉज अ वेरी वेरी इनलाइटनिंग टॉक एंड कैन आई आस्क अ क्वेश्चन इट्स अ वेरी बेसिक क्वेश्चन मे बी अस्टुपेड क्वेश्चन बट कैन आई कैन आई प्लीज आस्क यस प्लीज टू महाराज वॉट आई माई माई कंसर्न इज लाइक आई अंडरस्टैंड दैट वी रीड दैट एंगर इज नॉट गुड बट वी शुड नॉट गेट एंग्री एंड वी शुड यूटिलाइज इट इन द राइट वे बट इन डेट life practically uh, there are incidents which happen which which make me angry i'm talking about myself they make me angry and i um, at that point of time um, i realize that i lose my sense of uh, my ability to 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 do what is right or to behave in a right way Uh, so i am driven by that anger and i am not able to control it or i am not able to control my reaction to that anger so what how should i approach it in this in such simple day to day um, incidents uh, which do otherwise actually when i am not able to control that it does lead me to a difficult situation so how should i handle it i know i should chant hari krishna maha mantra at that time be calm but i am not able <laughs> so this is my 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 question and concern maharaj so how should i i respond to that that anger mm, yes well we have to come to understand that this display of anger is not actually necessary but there are are other ways by which we can respond to these kind of situations You know, something which makes us why does it make us angry what is it you know we have our own expectations of what should happen or what should be done and when things are not done the way we want them to be done we get angry so are we justified to become like to become angry is it 
actually proper for us to display our anger. We, you know, sometimes I would see Srila Prabhupada also get angry, but the anger wouldn't be for long. Now, often what happens, people become angry. They're, it can be ang they can be angry for three days. You know, it's not something they, they just show some anger and then they, you know, Prabhupada would be angry, be upset, but then, okay, you see, do something about it. You know, he, he wouldn't carry the anger on. So this is one point about the anger. Now, how, how much are you influenced? How much are you controlled by the anger? Are you actually using the anger properly? All right, something is not done right. It's not done properly. Does, do, does it mean we have the right to display our anger? And how do you display your anger? You see, you become angry. What do you do? Do you use nasty words? Do you get violent? Do you, do you really make a big scene in front of a lot of other people? It's a question of how you display that anger. This also should be considered. Are you really, are you really in control of your mind and senses? That's important. All right, something didn't get done properly. It wasn't right. You're not happy about it. You're not happy about it. Doesn't mean you can just get angry and, you know, use bad language and really, you know, show your disgust in front of everyone. We have to consider how to respond to these situations. So the anger, all right, you get angry, but you have to control it. Not that you should become degraded by the anger. Thank do you, you get my point? Yeah, yeah, Maharaj, it is, it is very, I liked the, word, the way you used the word display of anger. It's, it's really very important for me because actually it's the, Okay, if, even if you are getting angry, try try your best to not to display it. Just try to control it and reason it out that are you really justified? Or even if you have to convey something important, convey it in a in the proper manner so that the other person does not feel um, uh, disturbed by your anger or, or the situation remains under control and you are able to convey what you want to convey. Because that the way you said you do get angry when the things don't go as per your expectations correct that can happen so the best thing is to be in control of yourself which is not easy and and not to display it in an inappropriate way but to convey your point in a proper way and get things done in appropriate way that way everybody would be benefited thank you maharaj yes right i you know i i, I give the example Srila Prabhupada that you know, we would do often things wrong, which were not pleasing to him. And so he would simply say, why like this? Why you did like this? And then he would turn to someone and say, do something about it. Correct it. You know, like one day, one day, it was in Los Angeles. And so in the temple, Srila Prabhupada had darshan of the deities. And then he would go and take... Charanamrita. And so Srila Prabhupada went over to take the Charanamrita. And when they gave Prabhupada some Charanamrita, Prabhupada tasted it and said, Oh, someone has put salt in this. So Charanamrita is meant to be sweet, meant to be nectarian, but someone had put salt in it. So Prabhupada was really upset. He said, Who's done this? And so there was some person, young person there, and, and it, you know, so Prabhupada said, he turned to the, the managers and said, get someone responsible to do it in future. And that was it, you know, that was the end of it. So somebody else was given the task, somebody responsible was asked to do that in future. 
so yeah we have to understand that we shouldn't be over emotional and uh, become enraged and you know just create a terrible atmosphere by our anger <laughs> there, there, there's well there's a one of the devotees i know he he took part in one uh, group it was called anger management <laughs> because he had the tendency also to get really angry and you know very uh, violent and so on and so he joined one group anger management and just trying to help him to deal with that anger that one the beginning is to first become aware of it that we're becoming that we're totally overwhelmed and controlled by this anger emotion and once we're aware of it then we can start working on doing something about it but often people are not aware about it they're not aware of how this the, their anger is really unnecessary a lot of nasty situations can be avoided if people just learn how to control their anger so it's not always it's not really necessary that we have to make a big display of our displeasure by ang by an angry mood and you can see here in this situation in Srimad Bhagavatam how the anger degraded that because of his anger he cursed a person who was not really deserve he didn't Maharaj Pariksha didn't deserve to get a death penalty but because of the anger of this young boy he cursed Maharaj Pariksha to die so that's the kind of things which happen when people are influenced by anger so we do want to be careful we do want to try to avoid these things and becoming angry all right something doesn't please us as you said you can pick up your big bag and chant Hare Krishna sometimes a good thing to do is to just get out go out of the house go for a walk you know <laughs> sometimes you have to do things like that to to just get away from the situation to just calm down that's usually what happens we become when we become angry we're not calm we need to calm down we need to cool down anger you you know hot tempered it's not desirable it's not a healthy situation so we do want to be aware of this and we do want to try to conquer over this anger we want to be peaceful in the mind we have our expectations we have desires things we want to see done and but if they're not done yeah we become we can be disappointed but we're not really justified to become angry we may feel disappointed displeased but there's no justification for our anger so we do want to learn to conquer over this this anger it it's not good for us it's not helping us until we have control over our mind and senses of course to control our mind and senses if we controlled our mind and senses then we wouldn't become angry because we can't con because we don't have control over our mind and senses that's why we become angry so we do have to practice this uh, getting control later on you can learn to use that anger in the service of krishna but in our in our neophyte stage we don't want to try to use anger we're not qualified it will simply bring us trouble thank you so much Maharaj. so it, it helps to read the section from the bhagavad-gita where krishna is speaking about anger 
you can read for example about the three gates to hell lust anger and greed sometimes you know you can even write this verse on your wall you know write it on a big sheet of paper and stick it on your wall so you can see it regularly you know <laughs> three gates to hell lust anger and greed every sane person should avoid it and you can also put the, the other verse of how contemplating the objects of the senses, a person develops attachment. From attachment comes lust, and from lust comes anger. So anger is the younger brother of lust. <laughs> right? From the lust comes the anger. Because our lust is not satisfied, that's why we're becoming angry. So that lust, that all-devouring sinful enemy is never satisfied. It burns like fire and it causes this degradation. It brings about our anger. <laughs> so we do want to be very careful of this angry mood. We want to if, if we become angry, we should lament, we should regret that oh, I, I lost control of my temper. We, we should regret that. And we should uh, make greater efforts to control our mind and senses. You feel something's going wrong, it's going to make you angry. You have to detach yourself, you have to get out, go away, go for a walk. Or you know, pick up a book, or go and chant for uh, to make up. You go and chant for a couple of hours to, until you get over it. It's it's just the mind which is causing this problem, which is making us angry, which is degrading us. Soul is not angry. We are souls. We're not the body. We're not the mind. We allow our mind to influence us. So we do have to learn to control the mind. And then we can avoid these unpleasant situations where we become angry. Okay, yes. Any other question or comment? What time do they go on to? Is it time to finish? Huh? Yeah, it was my time. Yeah, okay. Okay, so thank you very much. Very nice to have the opportunity to spend some time with you. Thank, Hare Krishna. you. thank you for studying Srimad Bhagavatam. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you for a wonderful enlightening session. I, uh, it's our great pleasure to have you I, on this auspicious occasion and uh, we would like to hear from you more and more, like Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. Like uh, we, it is our, uh, um, we are really fortunate that uh, you know for uh, ladies such and we are having Maharaj. Uh, that itself is very great, and uh, we would like to have many more sessions from you, Maharaj. Vancha kalpata rubyascha kripa sindhu Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Now we will uh, proceed our uh, um, further. Uh,